Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to look at solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAMSA Green Booklet, Practice Test 1, specifically Unit 4, questions 14 to 15, and we're going to focus on oxidation states of carbon. So just to begin before we dive into the stimulus or to the units, um, carbon atoms, they can exist in a wide variety of oxidation states, depending on the atoms they are bonded to, from minus 4 in CH4 or methane, to plus four, such as uh, in carbon dioxide. An example of determining the oxidation states of carbon in acetonitrile, CH3CN, is shown in this figure here below. So you would have read the um, unit stimulus, and if you don't have a background in chemistry, it would have been very useful, but you don't want to sit the GAMSA and um, have to read this stimulus about oxidation states of carbon in the GAMSA, because you're gonna be wasting time. So if you didn't understand um, points in the, this stimulant or unit, I suggest that you brush up on your oxidation states and calculating oxidation states of carbon um, so that when you do sit the exam, you don't have to read that, whatever it is, quarter of a page stimuli um, to waste valuable time. But for those of you who aren't comfortable, just know that, um, or not comfortable uh, trying to derive the oxidation states of carbon, just know that if you do look at the stimulus, it tells us that if carbon is bonded to, let's say, for example, a atom that's less electronegative, so like hydrogen, um, we're going to decrease the oxidation state by one. So if hydrogen is going to have an oxidation state of one, so if it's bound to three hydrogens, so we're going to have to decrease it by one, two, three. We're also told in the stimulus, if it's bound to a carbon, the oxygen oxidation state doesn't change. So we know straight away it's going to be 1, 2, 3, minus 3. Just before we move on, this is a neutral compound. So remember, with neutral compounds, oxidation states have to always equal 0. So we have to balance this molecule so that everything, if you add up all these numbers, equals 0. Now, if we move towards this side of the molecule, we've got the carbon and the nitrogen. Again, if it's bound to carbon, there isn't going to be a change to the oxidation state. Now it's bound to a nitrogen, and the stimulus tells us that if it's bound to an atom that is more electronegative, we increase the oxidation number by one. So we know that uh, also it tells us if there are multiple bonds, it triples the effect, or in this instance, it's going to triple the effect, but it's going to multiply the effect by the amount of bonds. So we've got one, two, three. So it's going to be plus one times three. So the oxidation state of carbon is therefore going to be three. And to satisfy the molecule to make sure that all the oxidation states equal zero, the nitrogen has to equal minus three. So this is the principle um, that you have to kind of uh, employ for question 14. And um, the trick for answering question 14 is it's asking us to calculate the oxidation number of all the carbon atoms in each of the following reactions and determine which one is a redox reaction. So the trick for um, for question 14 is just ignore all the other molecules and let's just focus on the molecules that contain the carbon. So let's just go quickly from A, B, C down to D. So if we start off with, if I just clear the screen here, let's start off with A. So we've got CH3CN, so it's the acetonitrile which we just drew right now and it goes to a CH3, CH2, NH2, so it's going to be if we just draw it one, to be bound to NH2, so let's forget about that. So it's going to be one, two, one, two, three. So we already know the acetonitrile, the carbons here are going to be oxidation, so it's minus three and plus three. So we just have to make sure that these are either they're either going to be changing or not changing. So let's find out. So over here we've got one, two, three hydrogen. So remember it's going to make it to negative three, so you go down by negative three. So it's gonna be, when it's bound to carbon, it doesn't change, so this is gonna be negative three. So this carbon hasn't changed oxidation state. Let's look at the other carbon. So we've got here plus one, plus one hydrogen, so it's gonna be minus two, and then you've got a carbon here, which is gonna be neutral, so nothing's gonna change. So minus two, and remember we're bound to a nitrogen, which is more electronegative, so it's gonna, um, if it's a more electronegative, we're going to decrease the oxidation state by one. So if it's going to be um, 
oh sorry we're going to uh increase the oxidation state by one so it's going to be minus two plus one so this is going to be plus oh sorry minus one so minus two plus one is minus one so you can see straight away we've actually got our answer here so 14 is a but we might as well finish off the rest but you can see that clearly this carbon here has changed in oxidation state and remember so it's gained Four electrons, which means that this acetonitrile or this carbon in acetonitrile has become reduced because reduction is, remember, oil rig oxidation is loss of electrons, rig reduction is gain of electrons. So this carbon has gained four electrons, so this carbon has been reduced. So if we just go through BCD, remember, you want to just focus on the carbons. So if we just go through the rest, quickly so if for b we've got uh so c h o o h and it's going to go towards a let's say c h o n h so let's calculate quickly so that's plus one so it's going to be minus one um, plus one, plus one, plus one. So that's going to equal plus two. So one, two, three minus one is going to equal plus two. So that carbon oxidation state is plus two. Over here, we've got, so if that's a hydrogen, that means it's going to be negative one. So it's going to be one, two, three again. So it's going to be plus two. So we know B isn't changing. So let's go to C. So C, if we draw it out, it's going to be just a regular like that. And then we go, what do we got? It's going to be CH2OH2. So it's going to be C H H. Then it's going to be OH. Might as well put it here as well, OH. So we've got, remember, two hydrogens, which means it's going to be negative 2 plus plus one plus one so it's going to be zero over here we've got negative two plus one plus one is zero so oxidation state of this carbon hasn't changed so c incorrect and finally let's do the last one so ch3cl so it's going to be c i mean you can just draw it simply cl h h h goes to CH3OH, I mean, it's exactly the same, same principle here. So you can tell straight away just by looking at it. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3. So minus 3 plus the 1 is going to be minus 2. Same principle here, 1, 2, 3 minus the 1 is going to be so minus 3 plus the 1, sorry. So minus 3 plus the 1 is minus 2. So you can see the oxidation state hasn't changed. So with this sort of um, question, just read it clearly and just make sure to cut time, just focus on the carbon so you don't obviously waste time in the exam doing everything. I mean, if you want to practice, you can do everything if you like, but for the exam, um, if, you're, if chemistry isn't your strong point, I'd go back and have a look at how to assign oxidation states to neutral compounds and to ionic compounds. Because in this instance, they're neutral because they've got zero, but ionic compounds, you have to assign it to, it has to equal the charge on the ion. So that's something to think about. Now the last question. The last question, it's a bit of a trick, but um, hopefully you'd know that um, if you read it, you, you won't get tricked pretty much. So it says, according to the rules listed above, the oxidation number of carbon atom that has only one carbon bonded to it. So this is the trick. So it has one carbon bonded. So it gives you options of integers from plus three to minus three or say plus four to minus four. But because it says it has to be bound to another carbon, so you know straight away that you can't get an integer of four or plus four because if it's bound to carbon, it's going to be neutral. So you know straight away that it's going to have three other bonds here, let's say in a single bond. So let's say it's hydrogen. 
it's going to be 1, 2, 3. So this is going to be negative 3. So the max you can get, therefore, is going to be negative 3 if you have three hydrogens. I mean, if you make it into a double bond, you remove the hydrogen, it's going to just be negative 2. And let's say you remove, you add a triple bond, it's going to be negative 1. And now you might say, why doesn't, this is a question you might actually ask yourself, why doesn't carbon form four bonds with itself? Now, this is something, I mean, it's out of the scope of this question, but it's something you might want to read into. It's got a lot to do with molecular orbital theory. And it's the idea that if you look at how the orbitals are positioned, remember the double bond, or the, there's a single bond, which is going to be a sigma bond. You're going to have two pi orbitals overlapping. But the reason why you can't get another bond is because if you look at the molecular orbitals, the other bond the other free orbital to bond, they're out here. So they can't physically overlap. So that's why you physically can't get four tetrabonds with carbon on its own, which is why the answer can't be negative four. So that's why um, it's important to know that, um, or actually, whether it's negative four or whether it's going to be plus four, it's because, again, you can't get that, um, uh, that extra bond. So it's also important to note, uh, before I confuse myself, sorry, the reason why you can't get negative four is because it's bound to carbon, but the reason why you can't form a tetrabond is because the orbital is on the opposite side. It's the geometrics of the metal orbitals. So, um, well, you're probably saying, what about the other side? So if it's the negative side, so we've got integers negative three, negative two, negative one, what about the positives? So let's just do carbon with, well, let's just say chlorine. Same principle here. So if it's chlorine, we're going to get, so that's negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, so it's going to be plus 3. So if you do a double bond, remove one of the chlorine, it will be plus 2. Do another triple bond, remove another chlorine, it will be plus 1. So you can see now what we have, uh, we can get, if it's bound to one carbon, we can get integers from minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So you can see, therefore, the answer for 15 has to be A. Now, if you're finding it difficult with this sort of chemistry, um, and you do have, I guess, extra comments, you can post them in the comment section below, um, or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help. Um, chemistry, I know, isn't everybody's strong point, but um, it is very, if you take a very systematic approach to these sorts of questions, you can get it. But look, we're here, we'd love to help, and um, no question is too much of a problem for us. So uh, thanks for listening. Take care, and uh, we'll talk soon. Bye.